I don't know how I'm going to follow all these great speakers. <laughs> this is something totally new to me. But I just want to say thank you, Lord, for giving me this. Giving me this time. I just pray, Lord, that every word that I speak is from the throne room. I thank you in Jesus' name. Um, as Pastor's just said, I, I've wrote a book, and it will be on sale at the end of the night, and it's called Kevin Saves the World. So I think at times, especially these times in the church, we all need encouragement. And that's why I've been reading the book of Ephesians. I love the book of Ephesians. I love all the books. But I looked at the book of Ephesians because it's, it says a, it's a letter of encouragement to the church. And like I say, it's easy as we go. It's, it's quite easy to get... What, so we get a bit lackadaisical at times. I'm, and I'm not speaking to anyone in particular. I'm speaking to myself. I do. We get lackadaisical at times. And we sometimes forget who and what we are. So let me just... We know that the book of Ephesians was written by Paul. So I've just done a little bit of a background on Paul. As you, and these are things you probably know, but I think it's good sometimes with all the things you hear tonight, it's not going to be new, but it's going to be an encouragement. And that's why I've brought this. Just to, it sort of, for want of a better word, it gees you up, it gets you going, you know. But <coughs> Paul, born in Tarsus, the region of Cilicia in Southern Asia Minor. A prosperous and well-known center of education and philosophy. Uh, his parents gave him the Hebrew name of Saul in honor of King Saul, who was of their tribe of Benjamin. Paul also bore the Latin name of Paulus, and he was proud to say he was both a citizen of the Greek city and of Rome. Uh, Paul was quite young when he moved to Jerusalem. He'd probably be about 13 years of age. Uh, he was raised in a strict Jewish home. Uh, so with his Pharisaic roots, he went to study under one of probably the greatest teachers of that time, which was Gamaliel, whichever way you pronounce it, I've said that. And at this time, while Paul was studying, he learned his trade as a tent maker to help support himself. Uh, he needed money like everyone else, I suppose, so this is what he did. Now, we know Paul first appears in the New Testament in the book of Acts, uh, late on in the book of Acts, at the death of Stephen. And we know that Paul really didn't do nothing about it. In fact, he was sporting it, really. Uh, he, he did nothing to stop it. Uh, but the reason... Paul studied the Mosaic Law. Of being Jewish, he knew all about the Mosaic Law, the, you know, everything like that. And what Stephen was preaching seemed totally against what Paul was preaching. He didn't like what he was hearing. It was totally against what he... And he was very radical. He was very radical towards the Christians. In Galatians 1.13, he even admits himself he's persecuting the church. He's trying to destroy the church. And he admits it. But in the beginning of Acts 9, the book of Acts 9, Paul has that dramatic conversion. He knew it was the Lord. He was serving the Lord at the time as he thought was in the right way. He thought persecuting everybody was great. But until this time, and I noticed, uh, and, and you know yourselves, you, you see, you've read the book, that Paul always calls him Lord. So he knew who he was. In his heart, he knew Lord, Lord. And it had to be, I believe, um, it had to be a miracle. 
to change Paul from his way of thinking, uh, from being zealous for the traditions of his people, which he was, to being zealous for the good news of the gospel. So, he was a great man, Monday Paul, you know. It was so, I, could have, I could have spent so much time on Paul, it's, ne- it's never ending, but... Uh, The church at Ephesus that we're looking at was established in AD 53. Um, It was on Paul's second missionary journey. He was on his way back home to Jerusalem. Um, And he told them that he would return. And he did about a year later. uh, And he stayed for about three years, teaching with great effect, preaching and teaching, which you can see in the book of Acts 19, 1 to 20. You can read all about it there. And he developed a very deep relationship with the Ephesians. He, he, he loved the people. Ephesus, it was the capital and it was the leading business center of the Roman province of Asia, which is now, as we know, present-day Turkey. It was the center of sea and land transportation and was ranked as one of the great cities of the Mediterranean Sea. It was the commercial, political, and religious center for all Asia Minor, but it was also home to the temple of Diana. So we know there was pagan worshippers, and we also know that Paul had some problems with those. But there were a great number of Christians in Ephesus. The church was growing um, through Paul, through Paul's teaching and preaching. As we know, Paul's letter to the Ephesians was written while he was imprisoned in Rome. And it was to encourage and strengthen the believers in Ephesus. And this is why I looked at it, because we all need, I believe this book is as relevant now as it was back then. Perhaps I don't know, maybe even more so. We don't know, but I believe it's relevant for this time. Um... It was to strengthen the believers in Ephesus because since his conversion, Paul now saw the people as the body of Christ. That was the thing. And it starts off in in Ephesians 1 to 3, and Paul affirms the nature of the church and the fact that they've been showered with God's blessings. And that's us when we get saved. Sometimes, again, we need reminding sometimes. But it says in Ephesians 1.4, we were chosen, selected. That, I looked up that word, it means eminent, exalted, high office. And in Ephesians 2.6, it says we are raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, the one who's higher than I. In 1.5, it tells us we're predestined to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. And it's great. You, again, you can read about this in John 1.12, Galatians 3, 26, 28. But this adopted, people think of adopted, you know. But in those days, being adopted, you had the same rights as the biological children. What a blessing that is. You know, we aren't, we aren't just, oh, we, we've adopted. We're there. We're part of God's family. Yes. He loves us so much. In Ephesians 1, 6, we're accepted. God graciously accepts us. We don't deserve it. But he accepts us because we now belong to his son. He loved his son and he loves us. It's... It really blessed me uh, reading this. It was uh, Ephesians 1 7, we're redeemed through the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And we're forgiven of our sins. We started off afresh. Praise the Lord. It was great, wasn't it? Remember when we got saved? You know? And it's, it's like that baggage is taken off you, sort of thing. You know, you're free from sin. That doesn't say we're not going to sin anymore. It doesn't mean that. But we were redeemed and we were washed clean. We were included in Christ when we heard of the truth. And when we believed, we were marked in Jesus with a seal. And that seal 
was the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Wow. Wow. Again, 2 Corinthians 1, 21, 22, and 2 Corinthians 5, 5. You can read about this. I'm not going to read, I'm not reading them out for the simple reason it'll take me too long to go through. I'm not like pastor, I can't get through them that quick. We're citizens of the household of God, praise the Lord. Galatians 6, 10. And the, the really important one, the really important one, we're built on the foundation of Jesus Christ himself. We're built on the, on the uh, apostles and prophets. Yes, we are. But the cornerstone was the one that binds everything together is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's... In his letter, Paul also refers to the church as a body. We're the body. We're the body. And it tells the same God which worketh all in all. And we have our responsibilities as a body. We all have different positions, but we all work together. That doesn't say you can't work individually, speaking to me, but as a body we come together. It's great, it's lovely to be together. We come to church to fellowship together. We're a body. It's, it tells in the word, when one part of the body hurts, it all hurts. And it does. We feel for people. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. We're a temple. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in us. And as the temple, we need to keep that temple clean. That's watching things, seeing things, watching what comes in, what comes in your ears and your eyes. We've got to be so careful. And we know things do happen. We know we see things. We know we're never going to stop everything. We're not perfect, but we can do our best. And that's what Jesus wants. He speaks of us as the bride, the bride of Christ. It's awesome. The bride of Christ. Again, in uh, Solomon 4 7, Song of Solomon 4 7, beautiful. And in Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 3, it speaks of us as being a soldier. Now, I haven't gone that far because as we go into Ephesians 6, where we come into the warfare, it speaks of we are soldiers because there and there we find all the armory. The armory we need here in the body and the world is one another, love and prayer. That's our weapons. But that's the best one. That is the best weapon. The sword of the spirit. The word of God. The spiritual, well, as I say in Ephesians 6, we know all about them. So, these all show, these four things, the body, the temple, the bride, and the soldier, they all show a unity of purpose. There's a purpose in everything. And now each one of us is a working part. We are. We can't do without one another. We need one another. And now we must all work together, John 17, 20 to 24, to be united with Jesus. Unity, I looked up and it means koinonia, fellowship. Communion. And it's this koinonia that cements us to Jesus and to one another. That's what it is. So, as I'm drawing to the end now, we've got to remember three, three things. Jesus is the source of spiritual blessing. Jesus is the cornerstone the church and Jesus is the ultimate goal of spiritual maturity we come because we love the Lord and we love one another and that's what it's all about so I thank you for listening to me tonight thank you very much